Welcome. I'm Les Wallace, the president of Signature Resources, and I'm also the Nine Minute Mentor. Jim Collins, in his findings about the highest level of leadership, which he calls Level 5 Leaders, published in his book Good to Great, the best-selling leadership book, found that leaders who created the most sustained organizational accomplishments frequently sat down and compiled a stop-doing list. That is, a list of stuff on their commitments and calendars that was no longer as important as some of the vital few new commitments they needed to look after. You know, it's funny how fast priorities, commitments, and routine appointments can lose value because the business environment has moved on, causing a focus elsewhere to be more important. If at work you've recently answered the question, how are you doing, with the answer, busy, very busy, rather than productive, then you're feeling what I'm getting at. Today's 24-7 world of work and life is a rocket ship ride through the universe. And I'm wondering, do you think it's going to slow down anytime soon? I didn't think so. What Collins discovered about Level 5 leaders is that they recognize that habit, routine, and regular urgent issues can derail a leader's focus, and that those Level 5 leaders frequently reflected on their situation and decided what they could discard. You know, Stephen Covey had weighed in on this same subject years ago when he talked about how the urgent can push aside what's really important. As we say in time management, you have to say a few no's, no thank yous, in order to make your yes, yes I will, more valuable. Soon after I read the Collins piece, I was at the start of one of those years, and you know the ones, where opportunity and accomplishment abounds, yet you feel drowning in lots to do, lots of commitments to follow up on. So on a three-hour flight from Denver to Washington, D.C., I tried to scrub my year's commitments and opportunities, making sure to be honest about the vital few, the most important, that would enable me to be the most successful at the end of the year. And alas, those that might have to go by the wayside to make room for the new and important. The exercise was easy. The execution wasn't. I canceled plans for two professional conferences that I always enjoyed attending. That freed up seven days. I resigned from a board of directors, freeing up about 12 days during the year. I changed a full getaway vacation to a working vacation, giving me three productive days of time back. Now, don't go canceling all those vacations. Your brain and mental health do need some time to recover. And so it went with my stop doing list until, surprisingly, I'd found 45 days of prior commitments that I could free up to reinvest in some very, very important new outcomes for my business. It took discipline. I really, really wanted to go to those conferences, but they were not of interest to the vital few. I had found a replacement for me on the board, so I had no guilt about moving on. And the rest, they'd become routine clutter, and when I had the time, it was fine, but no longer vital now that I had bigger goals to accomplish. And it will take you discipline, too. You know that monthly or weekly meeting where you've been thinking for a while, you know, they really don't need me here. Boom. There's several hours a month freed up. You also know those sticky routines you're into that no longer produce the electricity they originally did. You know those routine duties or other assignments that you could have an up-and-coming new leader work on to grow their own leadership. The fact is, you know these and a lot of others. Now, it was a disciplined year for me, yet a very, very productive one. I bet it can be the same for you. Make a stop doing list now. And if you want some companion thank you to this, see my video, The Vital Few, under 9-Minute Mentor on my website, SignatureResources.com. You'll thank me. And I thank Jim Collins. <music>